Hi, and welcome to Yoga Download. My name's Jack. I'm here with the Kindness Yoga channel. And joining me today is Ellen Kay, who's a fellow teacher here at Kindness Yoga. Be sure to check out her classes on the Kindness channel as well. Today, we're going to move together through a short sequence that's designed to move your spine, your shoulders, and your hips in a variety of different directions, but not in any way, hopefully, that feels too extreme. See, so often nowadays, we're starting to think that more is better. And the idea of practicing for 20 minutes might seem like it's not even worth it. I'd like this class to be an opportunity for you, whether you've just been sitting in a chair for a long period of time, whether you've just completed an intense workout, to start to feel the benefits of doing just a little bit. So, in order to start off, come to tabletop position, please. Hands and knees. And as you begin, just take a little bit of free movement here. So that might mean taking a few cow-cats, where you arch and round your spine. It might mean making little hip circles, and it might mean stretching your arms and legs in any direction that feels good and natural to you. Again, this class is excellent when you've just been doing too much of something. So one of the first things that you can do to help yourself is start to feel into, what does my body need right now? Take a few more moments to finish what you're doing and make sure that you've done both sides. If you've done something on one side, go ahead and do it on the other. And then find your way back to the center, regular old tabletop, and we will take a few cow-cats together. On an inhale, pull your chest through to the front of your mat and lift your buttocks up behind you. And then exhale, press the ground away, root through your finger pads, pull your low ribs up. Inhale and pull your chest forward, pull your shoulder blades together on your back and lift your buttocks and then exhale round, gaze back towards your thighs as you pull your side ribs up. Take one more breath in and pull forward and through. And then exhale, round everything away. Be sure to stay rooted through your finger pads. Find your way back to the center, little tabletop, and then lift your right leg up and back behind you. Take it over to the left, outside your left leg, and put your whole foot on the ground your heel as well, so turn your hips up and open, lift your right arm to the sky, and then take it alongside your ear towards the front of your mat. Press down and forward with your left hand and feel how that lifts your hips and lets you arch the right side of your spine a little bit longer. Push down and back through your right heel as you reach out through your right fingertips. Maybe gaze up and let your neck begin to relax. Take another deep breath in here, and then exhale, come back to the center. Take the other side. Stretch your left leg up and back behind you. Take it slightly to the right. Set the whole foot on the ground. Turn yourself up and open. Arm to the sky or forward alongside your ear. Then get strong. Focus on your right hand first. Press down and forward. Feel the left side of your body get longer. Then reach out through your fingertips and push down through your heel. Gaze up, relax. Take one more breath in and then find your way back down to the middle, tabletop position. Lift your right leg once again, but this time bend your right knee, open your body to the right, and with your right hand, grab your right foot. So you might have to take your left hand out to the side a little bit to help you balance. Start to kick your foot into your hand, turn your chest up. In fact, begin to turn your right bicep up towards the ceiling as if you were trying to open the front of your shoulder wider. Kick a little bit more as you breathe in, and then on an exhale, come down through the middle. Take the other side, lift your left leg, shift your weight into your right hand, grab your foot with your left hand and kick. Now you may, in this position, some of us may start to feel the low back get a little crunchy. Strengthen your legs, squeeze the backs of your legs if you can access them, and feel your buttocks pull towards the back of the mat so that there's some space in your low back. Then push your chest forward and open your heart. Take one more breath in, and then find your way back down to the middle. Tuck your toes under behind you. Walk your hands back, sit on your heels, little toe torture position. For some of you, this may be not too intense. For others, it may be excruciating. Just so you know, it's okay either way. Make sure your pinky toes are tucked under with the rest of your toes. For some of us, that toe likes to fly away and escape. So you can make sure that that's under there as well so that it gets some of the stretch. Then interlace your fingers in front of you. Turn your palms to face forwards. Place the backs of your hands on your head. 
pull your elbows and armpits backwards and push your chest forwards. Then extend your arms straight up towards the sky. Reach. Yeah, breathe nice and deep here. Try to keep your hip creases soft, your low belly soft, but your chest, lift it up and forward, keep it active, and stretch your arms a little longer. Keep them interlaced. Excellent. Take one more breath in. Slowly release. Come back to a tabletop. Point your toes behind you, and then whack the tops of your feet on the ground like you're having a little tantrum. Yeah. Slowly crawl your way back, lay down on your belly. Interlace your hands behind your low back, all the way to the webbing. Then lift your chest and your legs away from the earth. Notice if it feels like you're squeezing your butt and your legs are turning outwards. Instead of allowing that to happen, relax your butt a little bit and try to lift from your inner thighs. See if by doing this, you're able to lift your legs without turning out and squeezing your low back. Lift your chest a little higher. Maybe lift your thumbs away from your buttocks if it feels good. And then slowly release down. Find your way to a downward facing dog. In your own way, you could use your knees to help you get there, or come up through a plank, maybe do 100 push ups, or any number smaller or larger than that. Take a big breath in, and a full breath out. Spread your fingers wide, make sure that they're spread. Push down and forward with your hands to lengthen your side bodies. Try to make more space between your armpits and your hips. Then squeeze your quadricep muscles above your knees and imagine you could shift the weight back onto your legs. Yeah. Keep the back of your butt lifting high, but also keep a little tone in your low belly so you're creating a neutral space along the length of your torso. And take one more big breath in. Let it go out your mouth. And on an inhale, lift your right leg behind you. Good. On an exhale, step it to your right hand. And then take a twisted lunge. Keep your left hand down, lift your right arm up. You could drop your back knee to the floor if that feels better to you. Either option is fine. Whatever you do, see if you can keep your hips lifting up and away from the mat rather than collapsing down towards the mat. This will allow you to squeeze your inner thighs and feel a sensation of zipping up in your legs and your torso. Turn your chest, pull your shoulder blades towards your back and see if you can rotate your low belly and ribs a little more. Then exhale your hands to the earth. Find your way to down dog. Take a big breath in and let it go. Then inhale and lift your left leg. On an exhale, step it to your left hand. Either with knee down or up, come into your twisted lunge. Right hand to the floor. You can take it out to the side a little bit if that helps you. Then push down with your back knee and feel your hips lift up slightly and try to get a little tone and squeeze from your inner thighs up towards your pelvis. Turn your chest, squeeze your shoulders on your back and then pull your low ribs in and turn them even more. Breathe here, focus on your breath or find some other point of focus. It might be your top hand. It might be the way your feet or your foot and your knee are pressing into the earth. Then take one more breath in and exhale hands to the earth. Inhale to plank and exhale back to downward facing dog. Breathe in nice and deep and exhale out. Then on an inhale, gaze forward between your hands. Exhale, bend your knees and lift your heels and step, walk or jump. On an inhale, come to a halfway lift in your forward fold and then exhale, fold over your legs. Do this again, breathe in and lift halfway. This time, place your fingertips on your shins below your knees. Bend your knees slightly and stick your butt out behind you. Then pull your shoulders onto your back like you're trying to shorten your arms like a T-Rex and pull your chest forward, try to lift your gaze up. Take one more breath in here and then exhale, fold over your legs, melt your chest towards your thighs. Inhale and rise all the way up, arms high overhead. Exhale, drop your hands in front of your heart. Bring your big toes to touch, or at least make sure your feet are parallel. Then lift your arms high over your head, interlace your fingers, and release your index fingers up. Stretch. On an exhale, tip to your right and let your hips move left. Notice as you do this that the weight in your feet may shift. For many of us, it goes towards the outside edges of the feet and the inside edges get light. See if you can root through all four corners of your feet as best you can. 
breathe and let yourself remain in this space, deepening slowly, just a little bit. This doesn't have to be intense. It can only go as far as you want and need it to for your practice today. Then on an inhale, come up through the middle and come over to the other side. Try to stay long as you come through the middle. Good. Maintain a little squeeze in your inner thighs. Maybe turn your chest up slightly by pulling your left ribs forward. On your next inhale, up through the middle. And on an exhale, bend your knees, interlace your hands behind your head, and stick your butt out behind you. So it's a little bit like a chair pose, but you're not quite as low and you've got your hands behind your head. Pull your armpits and your elbows back until you feel your upper back squeeze. Then press your head back into your hands, push your chest forward, and start to take your gaze and your chin towards the ceiling. The goal here is to feel opening in the front of your body, a squeeze in your upper back, but very little pinching in your low back. Take one more breath in here, and on an exhale, fold forward over your legs. On an inhale, lift your left leg up and back behind you, then step it back and down to a low lunge. Keep your back knee up, rather. Then inhale, lift your arms high overhead for high crescent. Squeeze your back leg. Try to lift your kneecap until it feels like it's pulling through your leg towards the back of your knee. Push with your big toe on your back foot so that it feels like the whole pose is lifting up and pulling forward. Then with that sensation of lifting up and pulling forward, bend your front knee a little bit deeper if you choose. Take one more breath in here, and exhale, warrior two, spin your back heel to the floor, right arm forward, left arm back. Keep the same amount of engagement in your back leg. Tighten up your quad, push this time through your back heel and toes. On your next inhale, reverse your warrior, and exhale, right elbow to right knee, sweep your left arm beside your ear, side angle pose. Notice in this position if you start to feel a little pinch in your side body or down in your right hip. See if you can squeeze your outer right buttock and pull it backwards towards your back heel. Then pull your ribs in and turn your chest up. Nice. Take one more breath in. And on an exhale, hands to the earth. Inhale, th uh, lift your back leg up and forward so you're balanced on your right leg. And then come to a forward fold. Just drop both feet to the earth. On an inhale, lift your right leg behind you, and then step it way back and down. Set up for your high crescent lunge. Lift your arms up high, push with your back leg. Here as well, especially when you're taking this variation in which your back leg is so straight and strong, it can be tempting to let your low back do all of the work here. So see, especially if you feel any pinch in your low back, if you can lift your hip points, the front of your hips, up and back to get just a tiny bit of tone. This isn't a gross action, it's not huge. Like everything we're doing in this class, it might just be a little bit. That's where you wanna be. If you do it a lot, you lose something. Take one more breath in here, and then open for warrior two. Squeeze the back leg. Drop your tailbone, the back of your pelvis, slightly down towards the ground but keep your chest expansive and lifting. Then reverse your warrior. And on an exhale, left hand to left knee, right arm alongside ear. Stretch. In this position, push through your back leg and stretch through your top hand until you feel even the ribs and the skin on your right side feeling like they're getting stretched longer. Then, especially if it helped you on the other side, pull your outer left hip back towards your right heel Move your ribs towards your spine, and then turn your whole chest up. Take one more breath in. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale to plank. And exhale, lower to your belly. You could use your knees to help. Keep your hands right where they are, but don't use them to push into the earth. Lift your legs, lift your chest. Very similar to the previous pose, but your hands are where they would be for cobra pose. Once we have our back body activated, we're going to come right into cobra pose. I call this a rocking horse cobra. Imagine that you're the legs of a rocking horse or a rocking chair. Squeeze your legs, then push with your hands, shift the weight back onto your legs so your chest lifts up. Pull your shoulders back, push your chest forward. Then find your way to a down dog. Breathe in nice and deep, and breathe out fully. Lift your right leg up and back, please. And then step it to your right hand. Lower your back knee to the floor. Whoops. 
Take it to your left hand. My apologies. Lower your right knee to the floor. Walk your right hand over to the side and then twist open to the left. This time we're going to add a thigh stretch. Bend your back knee. Grab the outside edge of your foot so your thumb faces up. Pull your hips up and back towards your heel and pull your heel towards your butt. Try to keep this connection close. Bend your front knee and see if you can sink your hips a little lower, but not too much. Turn your chest up. Breathe through an open chest. One of my friends uh, who teaches out in LA will often say that yoga is like cooking and different poses have different cooking times. She calls this pose a braising pose. It makes you really tender, but it takes a while to get there. Keep breathing. Take one more breath in now. And then on your exhale, release yourself back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. And out. Lift your right leg up, please. And step it forward and through towards your right hand. Lower your left knee to the ground and come into the twist. Left hand to the side, open to the right, then grab your back foot with your right hand. Pull your heel towards your glutes, but let your glutes lift towards your heel slightly as well. Keeping that, turn your chest up and open and bend your front knee a little deeper. Let your heel come with your butt down towards the floor. Excellent. These moments, these spaces in between, are oftentimes where the work gets done. The inner work, the work that might actually be important to us if we gave it the time. So let yourself have the space. And then slowly release, downward facing dog. Take one more big breath in here, and a full breath out. Then gaze forward between your hands, Exhale, bend your knees, and step walk or jump, feet to hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Bend your knees deep, lift your arms up, chair pose. Try to lift your low ribs and your low belly up and off of your thighs so you feel a little engagement inside. Then sit a little deeper and lift your arms a little higher. Now bring your hands down to your heart. Shift weight into your right foot and take your left ankle over your right knee little figure four shape. Let your buttocks move back towards the back of the mat so you're sticking your butt out like you're trying to impress somebody with it and keep your chest lifted slightly. Yeah. Notice how uh, Ellen has her foot flexed here, the foot that's over the top of the knee. This can be a useful way to keep your knee ligaments protected. So if your foot is floppy down there, draw some attention to it. See if you can activate it. Take one more breath in here and a full breath out. On your next inhale, lift your left knee to your chest. Hinge forward and shoot your left leg back. Little warrior three variation. You can keep your hands in front of your heart. You can take them by your sides, or you could stretch them out in front of you. Your option. Take one more breath in here, and slowly step back and down. Come to a warrior two once you've landed your back foot. Turn your hips open, right arm forward, left arm back. Straighten your right leg reach towards the front of the room, come into triangle pose. So try to move your hips away from the front as you drop your right hand down. Once you're in the pose, squeeze your right quad so that your kneecap feels strong and externally rotate your right leg so it feels once again like your outer hip is moving towards your back heel back here. If you do that too much, you can feel the inner edge of your right foot lifting away from the floor. Balance it out. Press the inside edge of your right foot down, then turn your chest up. Take one more breath in, full breath out. On an inhale, come up to star pose, straight legs, rise up, and then step to Tadasana at the top of the mat, hands in front of your heart. Good choice. On your next inhale, breathe in deep, and exhale out. Then sit low, lift your arms up high. Pause in this shape just to get your bearings and sit your butt a little bit deeper. Then bring your hands in front of your heart, balance on your left foot, and lift your right ankle up and over your left knee. Create a figure four shape. Let your hip creases soften and your buttocks move backwards towards the back of the room. But keep your heart open. You could try to lift your sternum up towards your thumbs pressed together in front of your heart. Take one more breath in here 
and a full breath out. Then stand tall, right knee to chest. Hinge forward at your hips and shoot your right leg back for a warrior three variation, balanced on your left leg. Create engagement in your back leg. Squeeze your right quad to make your leg straighter and then lift from the inside edge of the back thigh to rise up in the leg more. Take one more breath in here and slowly step back and down to a lunge, open to warrior two. Left arm forward, right arm back. Sit deep, squeeze your back leg strong. On your next inhale, lift and straighten your front leg. Reach forward for triangle pose, come all the way into it. So you almost lift your back hip up as you pull the front hip back and then tip over. Create length on both sides. Now, the strength and engagement in the legs is key. So I'm focusing on that on both sides here. Squeeze the muscles above your left kneecap so that it feels like it lifts up. Then pull your outer left hip backwards towards your right heel and turn your chest up. Notice if, you're, if you have all the weight on the outside edge of your foot, press down through the inner edge as well. Then take one more breath in, full breath out. Rise up to star pose by squeezing your legs together and then step to Tadasana, top of the mat. Good. This is the most ungraceful transition, but it's very effective. From Tadasana, come to kneeling and sitting on your heels. It works. From sitting on your heels, drop your hips over to the right slightly, so your right butt cheek touches the ground and your left butt cheek is kind of on your right heel. Then take your left arm across your right knee, lift your right arm up alongside your ear. Start to tip over, side bend to the left so that you get very long on the right side. Once you've side bended, use your left hand to pull yourself into a little twist and gaze up under your right armpit. Take a little whiff and determine whether or not you put on deodorant today. I'm serious, it's important. Then stretch your arm a little bit longer. Good. You may find that as you come deeper and deeper into this pose, your butt gets a little heavier on your heel and you actually can get some stretching and release in the top of your hamstring right at the attachment from this pose. Slowly come up through the middle and then shift your butt over to the other side so that your left butt cheek is down and your right is on your left heel. Lift your, oh, actually take your right hand across first, then lift your left arm up, stretch as high as you can, and then come all the way over into your side bend. Use your right arm on your thigh and maybe holding on to the outside edge of your leg to help you come into a twist and a side bend that feels supportive. You may choose to come deeper. You may choose to stay buoyant. Either one will help you gain benefit from this pose. On your next inhale, come up through the center. And exhale, stretch your legs out in front of you. Janu Shirshasana. Please pull your right heel towards your right groins. And if you don't know where your right groins are, pull them towards your groins. Pull your heel towards your groins. Put your hands on either side of your left leg. Yeah. Lift your chest and try to use your fingertips on the earth to turn and traction your spine until your chest faces your foot. Then slowly drop your chest towards your foot so you're forward folding but you're not doing so in such a way that you just round and drop your head down towards your knee. Instead, move your chest towards your foot so you create some length in this pose. Then if you choose, once you come into your twist and forward fold, you can start to round your spine. Maybe take your right hand to the outside edge of your left foot or the outside edge of your left shin. That can help you get more traction. So there's a lot of things happening here. You're twisting, you're folding, you're rounding. You can relax the back of your neck and get a little more internal here. If any of these components is crying out to you for more, that's fine, go there. However, see what happens if you let yourself be in the pose without too, too much that you need to do. Take one more breath in here. Let it go. 
on an inhale, small movement, just gaze ahead, lift your chest, and then exhale, release back up to seated. Switch legs. Stretch your right leg forward, pull your left leg back. Once you've set up your legs in an L shape or even wider, in an obtuse angle, turn your chest over your right leg by using your fingertips on the floor. Lift your chest and expand it towards your foot. Lean forward. Mm -hmm. Once you've done so, feel free to come deeper in any way that makes sense to you. That might mean a little rounding. It might mean grabbing the outside edge of your foot. Notice if anything is gripping, if anything is holding on, if anything is doing what you just don't want it to do, and see whether or not that piece can be released. Take one more deep breath in here. Full breath out. Inhale, lift your chest, gaze ahead. And exhale, come back to seated. Stretch your legs in front of you, lay down on your back, and then bend your knees, put the soles of your feet on the floor. Grab your strap if it's handy. Some of you may choose to use the strap, some may not. Take your right leg straight up towards the ceiling, and maybe wrap your hand around your big toe or your strap around the ball of your foot. So not in the arch area, but right below the toes and you could choose to choke up on the strap and try to bring the foot closer to your face, or you could back it off so that your leg faces straight up towards the ceiling or even a little bit further back if it feels more comfortable to you. Stay here, or if you choose, stretch your left leg out along the mat and try to relax. Pull your outer right hip slightly away from you. So here's that external rotation that we practiced in some of our lunging poses and in our triangle pose. Then press up through your big toe mound and try to feel your outer shin activate and your toes get strong and a little bit alive. Notice if your shoulders have lifted up away from the ground. Is there a way you could breathe in through your chest and pull your shoulders onto your back so that your back is broader and more soft? Hold the strap in your right hand and drop your leg over to the right. Keep squeezing your leg and pushing out through your big toe. On your next inhale, bring your leg back up through the center. Switch which hand is holding your strap or your foot. Shift your hips to the right and drop your leg over to the left so that your hips stack one on, vertically on top of the other. But try to keep your shoulders melting towards the ground. Often in yoga and in Buddhism and many other forms of awareness, they talk about the mind being like a monkey. It can get lost. It can go in many different directions. Are you able to find a point of focus within yourself that lets you keep the whole picture in mind. Not pressing hard for any one thing, but instead getting control of everything that's going on in just a slight, subtle way. Bring your leg back up through the middle in any way that feels good. Take a big breath in, and on an exhale, release your foot. Bend both knees, put the soles of the feet on the ground, and then take the other side. Stretch your left leg up, maybe use your strap, Maybe wrap your hand around your big toe. Push your big toe mound towards the ceiling. If you do this enough, you may start to feel your toes get alive and your outer shin activate. So that's something for you to watch for. See if you can find that sensation. And then pull the outside edge of your hip away from you and relax your shoulders down towards the ground. Maybe stretch your... Uh, Leg out along the mat if you have not done so already. Hold the strap in your left hand and drop your leg over to the left. Notice that your right side may try to peel away from the ground as your weight shifts left. See if you can counteract that, maybe with a little twist in your belly. Slowly find your way back up. Switch the hand holding the strap. 
wiggle your hips over to the left. You could have your left arm out to the left, perhaps, and then drop yourself over into the twist. Stack your hips. Keep your shoulders rooting towards the floor. Notice if coming into this twist has actually affected the way that your hips are rolling in or outward. Oftentimes, the leg that's across our body will start to internally rotate again. We've done some external rotation in class, so think about that. See if you could pull the outside edge of your left hip away from your chest as if your whole leg were going to turn slightly up towards the ceiling. Your toes were going to turn up an inch towards the ceiling. Take one more breath in here. And then slowly find your way up to the middle. One more big breath. And slowly release your leg. Take Supta Baddha Konasana so that the bottoms of your feet are touching with your heels close to your groins and your knees spread out to the side, bent knees. Let your chest open and your arms melt down by your sides, palms facing up. You can stay here for as long as you'd like or at any point start to stretch your legs out for a Shavasana. So that's your choice for a final pose. And as with any sequence that's designed to be rejuvenatory, any sequence that's for you to practice at home, take as much time as you need. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and toes as you invite a deeper breath through your chest, through your side ribs, through your belly, and through your back. Then maybe allow your movements to become bigger and in any way that feels organic and natural, start to find your way back to life, back to your day or your night. And as you're ready, Stretch your right arm alongside your ear, bend your knees, and roll onto your right side. Use your arm to cradle the side of your head. Let your chest melt towards the floor, and then use your arms to push yourself to an upright seat with eyes open or closed.
find your seat, hopefully tall and comfortable. Take a few more breaths. Then place your palms together in front of your heart. Feel your chest lifting up towards your thumbs and your shoulders melting down towards your hips. Bow your head to your heart. Then slowly lift your gaze and open your eyes.